Hi, my name is Jeb, and welcome to the Lazy Plant Corner. Today is exciting, as usual, because today we will be discussing my plant collection rules. Now, I haven't seen videos about this, but I'm sure everyone has them because plant collecting is very personal. We all have our likes and dislikes and, and certain boundaries that we have to keep up in order to keep ourselves in check. So I thought today I'd go through my list of rules with you, and it kind of covers collection rules, money rules, a little bit of space rules. I do want to give a quick update. I planted my garden two days ago. I'm going to be doing weekly updates on my garden, so the vi next video that will come out will be um, what I did to start my garden. So we'll be going over that and giving a one week update, seeing if anything has sprouted. I'm going to go with no, but hey, we're not in a week yet, I don't know. So I'll keep you updated on my garden, excuse me. Um, and in the interim, every other video will be um, houseplant updates uh, and content, whatever we're doing. So the first rule on my list is no duplicates. Okay, this is something I just can't wrap my head around. I watch a lot of plant videos on YouTube. I follow a lot of plant people on the internet in general. I'm in a lot of plant forums on the internet and I see so many people, like an incomprehensible amount of people that collect multiples of the same plant. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Golden Pothos. I see, I would, I would genuinely wager the majority of people online have more than one Golden Pothos and I just don't understand. Like there are so many plants, why collect multiples of both? And I would like to say too, like I kind of get it when your collection gets to like three, 400 plants, but at that point, stop yourself. Why do you have three or 400 plants? Because you have multiples of the same plants. I just don't get it. And no judgment, by the way, if you do this, if you have two or more of the same type of plant, that's okay. If that's what you like, that's okay. It's just not for me and I don't understand it. If you could offer me an explanation as to why you collect multiples of a plant, please let me know uh, because I just don't understand. And I hear, to be fair, I hear a lot of people say, like if I'm watching like a, a nursery tour, for example, I hear people say like, wow, this, let's use golden pothos again. This golden pothos has variegation like I've never seen before. Okay. So we've identified that you think something is different about this plant, but it's still the same plant. It will still look relatively the same. The only thing that will be different will be the pattern on the leaves. And you can get a different pattern on the leaves if you get an entirely different plant. I just don't get it. But hey, I also get if a plant is your favorite, you want like a lot of it because you love it so much. I get that. And maybe eventually I will have that too. I can't say for certain. Moving on though. The next rule I have is no, no, no plants. And you may be wondering, what's a no, no plant? Well, I will give you an example, but I will not give you my list of no, no plants because that is a separate video. A no, no plant is a plant that is on my list of plants I don't collect. An example of this is anthuriums. I don't like anthuriums. I don't know why. I don't really have a reason. A, a lot of anthuriums look really different. Like it's not like they look the same in every single uh, uh, species type, but like, I just don't like anthuriums. I'm sorry. And I, this stems from particularly not liking common anthuriums, the anthuriums you see all year round, particularly at Christmas though, um, in big box stores, grocery stores, heck, maybe even like corner stores. I don't know, they're very common and I just don't like them. No plants that I don't like, basically. And I think everyone has those. Like I don't I don't think that there's a point to getting plants just to get plants if you don't really love them and value the way that they look in your home and the feeling that they bring to your space. Um, I don't think anyone does that. But you know, and if you do, again, that's okay. I don't care. Like this video is not to hurt anyone else. This is just the rules in my collection. And this is how I have built my collection. And this will probably be how I continue to build my collection. So I'm really just curious about people's plant rules. I really am. So if you have plant rules, also leave them down below. Give me your plant rules. Um, but yeah, no, no, no plants. Third rule nothing over $80. Now, 
this might be a bit of a hot question for some of you big plant collectors out there because I know y'all can pop a pretty penny on plants like I okay I will tell a quick story I love reddit and I was on r slash houseplants, as I am every day, and I saw a picture of a albo, uh, a monstera albo. And so if you don't know what a monstera albo is, it is this plant, but it's var white variegation. And the monstera albos, if I'm not wrong, I know that there's different types of variegated monsteras, um, but I believe the monstera albos are known to be the albos because they put out the most white and most commonly like half leaves or full leaves, which die. But anyways, uh, anyway, so there was a picture of this albo monstera on someone's Reddit and they were saying, I'm having really big houseplant purchase regret. I spent a lot of money on this houseplant and uh, how much would you spend on this? Justify my purchase by telling me how much you would spend on this. And I'll try and find the picture and put it up here and, and tag the person who posted it because um, it's a big plant. Like, you know what? It's a fair sized plant. A lot of album uh, monsters you see out there uh, or just high constellation monsters, variegated monsters in general are typically not a big plant. They're usually one or two leaves uh, or just a rooted cutting they aren't usually that big so seeing a big one was pretty rare I, I, I honestly think this probably at the time was the biggest uh, album monstera that I've seen so uh, people are commenting in the comments I would pay this I would pay this and all of them were I would say above $500 again big plant big price tag this person is asked to comment how much they paid for their album monstera and I really hope that I can find a picture because this plant they paid $1,400 for. I lost my shit. $1,400? $1,400? $1,400 is more than my rent, my car insurance, and my phone bill combined. And I pay $315 for my car insurance. So just, I just, okay, outrageous prices. But hey, I'm gonna be fair. Collecting plants is no different than any type of collector hobby. People that collect antique cars, people that collect action figures, people that collect makeup, people spend money on their hobbies because it is a collection. It's the whole point of what you're doing. And as much as I love plants, love botany, love gardening, love taking care of uh, flora, I also like the collection aspect of it as when i was a kid i collected porcelain dolls i get it um but whoa we've gotten way off track nothing over 80 dollars is my rule the most i've spent on a plant was 70 dollars, and that was for my um alocasia regal shield which is right here it was actually $62, but after tax it was 70. So that's the most I've ever spent on a plant. That is likely the most I will ever spend on a plant. Um, I I really can't imagine paying a, over $100 for a plant. I just can't. Um, now, could I imagine paying over $100 for a plant when it's huge? Yeah, but that's not the way plant are. Uh, the plant market is very expensive. If you want rare plants, they come with a hefty price tag and it's a price tag I'm just not willing to pay for and that's okay with me. Rule number four is no high humidity plants. <sighs> Brothers, I have broken this rule. I bought a humidifier. So I'm going to save this rule for a whole other video, but just know it was a rule on my list. No high humidity plants. I did not collect plants that needed high humidity because I did not want to invest in a humidifier. It was part of the lazy brand. And what did I do? I broke that rule. I'm a liar and a cheater. But I'm just, I'm being honest. Right now, I'm setting the record straight. I've changed this, but I still won't buy really, really, really humidity needing plants because I don't want to build a greenhouse. Uh, outside, would I have a greenhouse? Hell yeah. Inside, I can't be bothered. Rule number five, bargain shop. This is a big rule for me and it's part of why I, um, love, why I love plant shopping. Recently, I have really started to hone in on where plant selling places in my city when they get their shipments and where they get their shipments from and which locations 
have similar or the same provider. So Tuesday is a big day in my city for plant uh, restocks. And I've noticed that one of my favorite nurseries happens to share a plant provider, I'm calling them a plant seller, I don't know, the, the, the big truck that comes with two of the really big box stores in my city, uh, hardware stores, Canadian Tire and Home Depot. And so I did an experiment. I bought the same plant, same size pot from two different stores. One was $6.98, one was $27 even. What do you think the difference was there? $27, nursery price. $6.98, Home Depot price. So you have to bargain shop and bargain shopping also means shopping on Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. Uh, rule number six, no trending tropicals. This is at you, Costa Farms. Um, and this is kind of a misleading rule because it doesn't mean that I won't buy something that's popular at the moment, but it does mean I will not buy that plant when it is at its peak popularity because supply and demand that is what the plant industry runs on if there is a high demand for a plant there will be a high supply of the plant with a high price tag if less people want it because this section of people have already purchased the plant then the supply drops there are fewer of them but with lower price tags so another example of this is the phil duncan silver sword i loved this plant when i first saw it a couple months ago it was very expensive I got mine in a four inch pot for $10. Very affordable, very cheap. Is it small? Yes. Does it look like the majestic silver sword that everybody wants and has? No. Will it get there one day? Yeah. And that's okay with me. I like small plants. It, I'm not really one to get, I don't have very many big plants. Part of that is due to space, but part of that is due to, I like having all the small ones. It, it, first of all, room for more. And second of all, uh, it's great to see them grow. It's so much fun. So no trendings, sort of. <laughs> Next is no ferns. Now, this is a rule I broke. I'm back to following the rule, but I did break this rule. My rule is no ferns until I have a bathroom with a window. I don't have a bathroom with a window right now. I wanted a fern, I bought a fern, I resold the fern because it was dying. Um, did I, it could be brought back 100%. Uh, I, I just didn't want to be the person to bring it back. So, and at the time, why could I not have this fern? Because I did not have enough humidity in my place. Now I have a humidifier. Could I have a fern now? Yeah, probably I could. Will I get a fern? Not until I have a bathroom with a window. It's partly aesthetic too. I want the aesthetic of having a fern in, like hanging on the shower curtain rod and you can see it when you're showering and it's cute and nice and uh, plants everywhere. But uh, it's, it's also for um, practicality. Ferns need really high humidity. They need their soil to be constantly moist. Where do ferns live? They live in wet, boggy areas. And also where I live everywhere, um, but typically mostly around the world, ferns need a lot of moisture. So. When I have a bathroom with a window, I will get a fern, but until then the rule is no ferns. And number eight, my final plant rule, no online shopping. This might be a surprise to some of you who don't know me in person, but I do not shop for any of my plants online. I will never shop for any of my plants online. I just don't get it. This is another thing similar to my no duplicates rule that this is one that I have just because it's something I just don't personally understand, not because it's something I'm telling myself I'm not allowed to do. But uh, shopping online for plants is fine. Um, I, 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 I have watched people unbox plants and I'm sure they're fine. But a lot of times I watch those people have plants further down the line and those plants aren't fine anymore. Plants aren't meant to be shipped in boxes. They just aren't. Um, they can be, you know, but where do plants live? Not in boxes. They can tolerate it, but it doesn't mean it's good for them. And any transport of plant is sensitive. You know, there are so many videos on, on YouTube about uh, moving with my plants. Why? Because it's a big ordeal. Plants don't like to be shipped. They just don't. And so I personally won't buy plants online. I don't want to 
paying for them online, I don't want to guess at what they're going to look like. I want to be in the store and look at all the plants and pick out one that speaks to me. And I'm sure you can do that with online shopping as well. But to be fair, I'm just not much of an online shopper. I really don't shop online. Uh, where do I buy all my clothes? Thrift stores. When do I shop online? When I specifically need to order something that is only sold online or that I can't get in person where I live. So I can get plants in person where I live and I'm going to continue buying them that way. But again, if you buy plants online, power to you. I'd still love to see what type of plants you're buying, but it's just not for me. And with that comes the end of our video. I really hope you enjoyed this one because it's something that I, I really love. Uh, I think it's really cool and unique and, and I would love to know what your plant rules are if you have any or if you think that you might have to develop some because of your budding collection. Um, because that's, I definitely didn't start with all of those. They've, how I, like I said at the beginning, it's how I've built my collection but I didn't start with all of them. So if you have anything to say or love to share, please put it down below. I would love to hear from you. As always, if you enjoyed spending time with me and you would like to hang out with me more often, click subscribe, come back and watch some more videos. And until next time, take care of yourself, enjoy your plants, and I'll see you next time. Bye.